Good morning, uh, everyone. My name is uh, Karen Nishimura. I'm a French journalist uh, working for several French media in uh, Japan. It's the first time as a, um, a MC for a, a press conference for the FCCG. So I'm not necessarily the best uh, English speaker you can find in the town, but uh, I will do, do my best today. Uh, we will have uh, three guests today for this press uh, conference. Uh, uh, about uh, the reopening Japan to foreign student in Scola, uh, about the restriction uh, for uh, travel and re-entry in, uh, in Japan. So as you, you know, uh, Japan has imposed our travel and try and re-entry restriction to fight the spread of uh, coronavirus pandemic in Japan. Among uh, the hardest hit by this measure are international students and foreign scholar and of Japanese studies. So uh, our three guests today will uh, explain what uh, happens and how they can uh, tr they try to um, change uh, this uh, situation and to solve this uh, matter. Our first uh, guest is uh, Andrzej Bekes, president of the European Association for Japanese Studies. The, the second one is uh, Sven Kramer, uh, who is assistant professor at Kyushu University, Faculty of Humanities. And uh, our third guest is Caroline Frank, vice president of Hiroshima University. So I will uh, give the mic now to uh, Andres Beckes, president of the European Association of uh, Japanese Studies for his presentation. Thanks a lot. Good morning. And, uh, Good morning. Yeah. Uh, I let thank you very, yes, thank you very much. Uh, uh, well, I will just uh, correct a little bit your pronunciation of my name. It's not Andrej, but Andre. Bekesh is okay. Uh, I'm so very, uh, we are all very honored uh, that FCCJ uh, gave us the opportunity to uh, have our, uh, I mean, not our voices and the voices of people affected by these measures heard uh, for a wider uh, <clears throat> audience and uh, well i participate that we have to uh, the, I, I apologize that we have to participate online it's because of geographical reasons uh, and uh, well in my case i had uh, just until uh, a few minutes ago another uh, online conference uh, so i couldn't uh, come in person. I'm actually living not so far from Tokyo. <clears throat> so uh, as uh, has been uh, <clears throat> uh, already said in the introduction, uh, well, with the arrival of uh, COVID epidemics, uh, Japan in the beginning of April took very strict measures, restricting entry uh, to the country to all uh, foreign nationals, well, citizens, uh, with exception of uh, special residents. Uh, and uh, so in comparison with, uh, let's say uh, 27 EU countries and OECD countries, uh, which uh, allow uh, residents to come and go uh, with the same, uh, uh, well, uh, the same as, as uh, own citizens, uh, Japan uh, draw, uh, very strict line. So foreign uh, residents, I mean, uh, foreign citizens uh, are not supposed to enter Japan with now restrictions being lifted. So uh, these measures actually resulted in, uh, well, very uh, big uh, problems for many of the, well, big problems for, for many of the uh, foreign residents, not only people in academia. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> also in, uh, in, the, uh, <clears throat> in, in our field, we are, we are well, uh, academics uh, specializing in, in, in Japan studies, but there are many other people in academia who are working in natural sciences and technology. So we are just speaking for a small segment of uh, all the foreign uh, 
<clears throat> experts uh, who work as researchers or teachers at Japanese academic institutions and for international uh, students. So uh, <clears throat> also in the, uh, so I, I will speak as, uh, <clears throat> for, for the European Association of Japanese Studies. Many of our members, teachers and students uh, who are active in Japanese uh, academic institutions were also afflicted by this. Uh, and uh, actually Japanese media reported about the plight, not just of Japanese studies scholars, but of uh, foreigners who were uh, afflicted by these uh, <coughs> measures uh, Already in May, in June, uh, even more, there was an uh, <clears throat> editorial very critical in Asahi Shimbun. Uh, there was a, uh, <clears throat> uh, an article in uh, Mainichi uh, uh, <clears throat> Morning Edition, uh, also published uh, on, on the net, web edition. And uh, the plight is really, uh, for some people, very, very difficult. So I will just tell an example, a tragic story of the EAJS member who is a full-time professor at the Japanese National University. And after leaving in March uh, for, uh, well, academic uh, reasons, uh, having some uh, academic uh, things to do uh, abroad, uh, the uh, couldn't return at the end of March because the, all the flights were or most of the flights were cancelled. <laughs> the flight was cancelled, and uh, so this person was finally succeeding in finding a flight uh, uh, over well with with a detour over somewhere I know. <clears throat> and in mid April, managed to arrive to Japan. And what happened? Uh, was treated as a kind of what at first illegal attempt to enter Japan, and then after four or after five days of uh, uh, well negotiations and uh, uh, contacting embassy, university, both gave support. But after five days, living in a room with lights all 24 hours on, no food provided, she, <clears throat> this person, kind of managed to get uh, the food for herself, uh, had finally to leave uh, Japan. So this is a very, very stressful, uh, stressful experience, I would say. And after hearing several other such similar experiences, uh, EAJS decided that uh, we would like to see what, how our members were afflicted. And uh, I will show you some slides uh, uh, from the survey we uh, we had just last week for, for uh, seven days, just a moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had a survey uh, from seven days. Uh, it was an internet online survey uh, uh, for our members. And uh, we got uh, 123 respondents among 800 current members. This time, EAJS membership has dropped because this year the conference uh, during which the membership increase, increases was uh, postponed uh, for the next year. And this way uh, we have uh, only, uh, so old members who still remain and many people uh, who were members couldn't or wouldn't re renew un until next year. Anyway, uh, 123 people uh, responded, and most of them, the, of the respondents, are people uh, uh, engaged with Japanese universities. And uh, <clears throat> so uh, most of the respondents were professors uh, or researchers. Uh, there were very few students and others. And the result is that uh, more than 80% of people are uh, affected by these measures. Uh, so, and how are they uh, affected? Uh, sorry, how are they affected? Uh, so they were uh, affected by travel ban, more than 22% uh, of respondents. So this is about uh, 20 people uh, <clears throat> were 
uh, sorry, 25 or so people were affected. They couldn't return to Japan. And many, uh, the rest were affected so that they cannot travel out of Japan attending some uh, academic meeting or some, something abroad. So uh, this is a very, well, big problem for the people affected. And then of course, uh, we had individual comments. Uh, well, for instance, I'll just read the first one. So I believe all of us are affected by the travel ban, if not practically, then certainly emotionally. As a 33 year resident of Japan, I'm deeply disturbed by the separate and unequal treatment of Japanese and non-Japanese residents. We should all be outraged. So uh, <clears throat> influence on all, on, all, uh, on all aspects of life. Uh, so effect of ban on Japanese academia, uh, Professor Funk will tell us more about that uh, later on. Uh, effect on uh, scholars who would like to go to Japan. They have scholarships or uh, fellowships and they can't uh, realize it. So uh, this <clears throat> uh, detailed, uh, details are available at the homepage of EAJS. Uh, uh, I will now uh, leave the word to uh, <clears throat> Professor uh, Kramer who will tell more about the petition which is the result of this plight of affected people. Thank you very much. Professor Kramer. Uh, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Then I also uh, prepared a presentation, a PowerPoint presentation, and I also would like to, sh to share it. Uh, yes. I think uh, Andre's sharing is still active. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. Oh, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay, it now should be on your screen. So uh, first of all, good morning, everybody. Uh, I am uh, Sven Kramer. I am living in Fukuoka, a long-term foreign resident of Fukuoka. I'm currently affiliated uh, with uh, Kyushu University, but this uh, whole action with the petition and so is uh, completely private. And uh, that's why on the slide I only wrote that I'm a long-term uh, resident. And yeah, I have uh, no official permission to utilize my current job uh, position. Uh, but if some background information about me is needed, you can write that I am uh, working at a Japanese university without uh, naming, naming it expl uh, explicitly. That would be a little bit uh, more safe for me. OK, um, now on for the petition. But now I just want to uh, say what I think uh, is wrong with the current policy. Uh, the thing is that the Japanese government does not properly differentiate between residents and visitors in its border control. And if you don't have Japanese nationality, you are basically treated like a visitor, no matter what your visa status is. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, residents, regardless of nationality, are valuable uh, contributors to Japanese society. And um, also, one main reason for this uh, reasoning is that they have the same duties as uh, Japanese citizens in contributing to society, especially paying taxes and paying health, insur health insurance and retirement insurance. And this uh, payment of health insurance, if you live in Japan, it's uh, your duty to do it. You uh, can't legally dodge it. And I think that especially this, uh, their payments into the Japanese health insurance system should actually entitle them to be tested at the Japanese ports of entry and if necessary, uh, be treated at Japanese medical facility. Because this is basically, this is what health insurance is for. So, yeah. And, uh, yeah, why did I reach out to an online petition? Or why created I uh, an, such an online petition? Well, uh, from the beginning of uh, this policy, 
multiple diplomatic missions reported uh, that they were and are still urging the government to loosen the restrictions, at least for residents. But uh, there was no success to be seen throughout April and May. And uh, it even got uh, actually worse with the Japanese government uh, increasing the number of uh, banned countries. And also reports by Japanese media uh, about this problem were very scarce. So many people I was talking about weren't really aware of this uh, problem. And I'm not, I'm currently not directly affected now, but I could become at any given uh, time because I also have uh, el still elderly uh, relatives in my home country. And, uh, this, so, uh, and at any given time when something is with them, I would like to uh, travel abroad and be able to uh, come back because um, I have my life here and not there. So, uh, and in order to raise awareness to this problem and to make the voices of affected people heard better, I decided to start the petition at uh, change.org. Uh, this is a very uh, famous uh, site for uh, such actions. And I actually sent the petition with a list of more than 10,000 supporters and comments posted on the petition page on uh, the 6th of July, uh, la it's, uh, last week, Monday. And by now, it has gained more than uh, 11,400 signatures. So at the last part, I'd like to talk a little bit about comments, because as many of you may know, uh, people who signed a petition can also uh, comment on them. And as of this morning, there were 368 comments, so I can't talk about every uh, Every one of them, but there are a wide variety of commentators, such as non Japanese living in Japan who cannot leave or do not dare to leave, even if they may get back in, non Japanese who left before April and are stranded abroad, Japanese no Japanese, uh, with non Japanese family members who cannot enter Japan, just pathetic Japanese people, and uh, people who know uh, somebody affected and support in their favor. So I just read out a few com comments. First, non-Japanese in Japan. I live in Japan, I work, I pay my taxes, my healthcare, my pension, my rate, yet I'm treated as if my labor are not valued at all by policies like this. I'm treated like a temporary visitor. visitor. And legal foreign residents of Japan must be allowed re-entry on legal grounds of having a valid legal permission to reside and work in Japan but on humanitarian grounds. We are not refugees, we are legal residents of Japan and didn't sign a paper when coming to live and work in Japan that we won't be able to leave Japan and won't be able to see our family members abroad unless someone died or some gets sick. I have to shorten a little bit. Then about non-Japanese residents stranded abroad. Then we have a uh, Malaysian who lives in Japan since 2003 but had to uh, go to Malaysia with her son for medical treatment, but uh, can't get back in. However, Japanese people tra traveling from Malaysia could back in. Then an another person uh, who lived in Japan for 11 years and uh, yeah, observed all rules of the country also couldn't get back in. Then we have the voices of Japanese with non-Japanese family members. Here's a text I had to translate from Japanese. I strongly support. I married a Chinese woman three years ago and we have lived abroad since then. I plan to move to Japan in February and applied for a visa. But we are separated since then. A certificate of eligibility will expire in July. And he also goes on with how he thinks that the current ban is violating article number 700 52 of the Japanese Civil Code. And another person, I'm a Japanese national married to British live, living in the UK with two children. And if an elderly, uh, my parents pass away, my husband and children will not be able to attend funerals in Japan. This is by a Japanese living in the world. Uh, so a variety, a broad variety of uh, voices from people affected. 
and I hope that I can, with this petition, contribute to solve this urgent uh, problem. So, and now I'd like to uh, give the speech to uh, Professor Funk. Thank you very much. And also thank you a lot for setting up the petition because I think that really raised a lot of awareness on this topic. My name is Caroline Funk and I'm Vice President of Hiroshima University. I saw the petition on the EHS mailing list and that's when the three of us started to work together on this topic to raise awareness about this problem. So I would also like to share my presentation So can you see the presentation now? Okay, thank you very much. So I'm giving the perspective from one national university in Japan and Hiroshima University is one of 13 global, super global universities type A who strive to create a global campus in the, within 10 years. So we are very much affected by this problem and that's why I decided to talk about this issue. First of all, just to give you the background, Japan right now has 300, more than 300,000 international students. About half of them are at universities. So what is the situation at our university? To just give you an example, this is our international faculty professors. Their numbers increased from 3.7% in 2013 to 7.5%. As you know, the percentage of foreign nationals in the Japanese population as a whole is about 2%. So among our professors, the percentage is much higher. This shows that universities are really at the vanguard of creating an internationally open society. If we look at international students, we have about 2000 international students and they make up 12.6% of all our students. So they are an important part of our education, also for the Japanese students who study together with them and learn all kinds of international perspectives from them. What happened in April 2020 is that 88 of our enrolled students couldn't come back. They left for home or for research in the spring holidays in March. They tried to come back to Japan before the travel ban started but their flights were cancelled or they couldn't get a flight and so they are still in their home countries. We also have 43 students who plan to come to Japan newly, get a residence visa, come to Japan, had the permission to enter Hiroshima University but cannot come and some of them are now taking online courses. Another 91 students postponed entering the university until October. Also, two of our professors cannot come back to their workplace since April, so they have been working online for more than four months, for almost four months now, and many other new professors, international professors, could not start their contract. And this situation will become even worse in October because more international students come to Japan in October and they don't even know now if they can join the university or not. So what does that mean for the students? The international students who cannot came back, come back, they do take online courses because now to avoid COVID, all our courses are conducted online, but very often they don't have sufficient internet connection. They cannot access books or research material or conduct experiments or other research activities. So some of them might not be able to graduate or have to extend their studies all the, while, the time they have to pay rent and insurance in Japan. And they might lose the part-time jobs they were having here to support themselves. So for them, it's financially a burden, but it is also a problem because they cannot take the classes and do their research. Those who want to come, but can't because they're not allowed to enter the country are in a similar situation. They also have the problem that they can't receive their grants because they are not in Japan. Some of them or many of them might actually give up on studying in Japan. And those who are in Japan, our international students feel very insecure because 
their Japanese peers now very often go home to their family and study online from there. International students are left at the university. They cannot go back to their families because they would not be able to re-enter Japan. So they have a lot of psychological problems. For the faculty, for the professors who cannot come back, it's a similar situation. They have to teach online courses without their material because usually when you go on a research trip or going home, you don't take all your work material with you. They cannot fulfill their administrative duties because especially files with personal data are left on our computers in the university. They still have to pay rent and insurance in Japan, and some of them are separated from their partners or families. Those who would like to start working in Japan and have the job secured and were supposed to come here will not be able to do so and might give up coming here. And once again, those who live here like me feel insecure because we cannot leave the country. So the consequences for the university education in Japan are quite wide ranging. And this includes the, the immigration restrictions on people who have a residence permit in Japan and also on those who have a, the chance to enter Japanese universities but can't get a resident permit. Especially the super global universities, but also many other universities have created many programs taught in English or otherwise aiming for international students. All these programs will lose their students. Many exchange students visit Japan and study together with Japanese students. For example, Hiroshima University has more than 90 exchange partners where we have students coming mainly in October. So the Japanese students will lose the chance to study in an international environment at home and create research connections with students from other countries. And as you know, the international higher education market is highly competitive, but the Japanese universities will lose momentum in this competition because the image will be established that students cannot come to Japan or they might be excluded from coming back at any time. The same is true for professors. If we look at universities and societies, Japanese universities have been aiming for an international and open society for the last 10 years. Now, our students, our teachers, our staff come from a diverse background. We have international students born or raised in Japan, Japanese students born or raised abroad, students from multinational families who would have double nationality if it were allowed in Japan and professors like me who spent half of their life in Japan. So these people cannot be divided and excluded by nationality. They should be considered as residents as part of Japanese society. So we hope for a fast removal of the entrance restrictions to holders of resident permits in Japan, especially or including international scholars and students. We also hope for a clear strategy on entrance restrictions for international students who wish to study in Japan from October 2020. And to support this, to make it easy for people to enter Japan, we need clear and easy to realize measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 after immigration. These should include free PCR tests and the possibility to quarantine at the place of residence. Thank you very much for your attention. So, thanks a lot uh, for this very interesting presentation. Uh, we'll take now questions from uh, the floor. Uh, and uh, if there is no question from the floor, we have, uh, I will see some uh, questions online. Uh, so, we can, uh, do you have any questions from the floor? Please use the microphone. Please uh, give your name and your affiliation. Um, I'm Kakuchi. I'm Kakuchi from University World News. And I'd like to ask how the situation in the US, like not allowing for um, foreign students to have American uh, visa, student visa, how will that affect the international students coming to Japan? Who 
wants to answer this question? Um, yes. Yes. Sorry, please. Uh, just this morning, I have received the news that, uh, uh, well, a statement by president of Stanford University that American authorities have tracked back. They canceled this limitation and they are back to March restrictions, which are much, much, uh, uh, well, which allow uh, any kind of residents to stay and return uh, to United States. So it was a short attempt by American administration, but due to a very strong protest of American universities, it was canceled in about uh, well, le less than 10 days. So I received also a question uh, online from uh, Elgin Yolan Mas uh, from BBC World Championship and um, <clears throat> was asking until the end of December, the UK is still technically part of the EU's visa and immigration policies. What would you recommend to UK citizen students who are unable to come to Japan? And two, how about the opposite, meaning those student or school age dependents who had to evacuate to Japan to be with their families, but now face deportation when their student or tourist visa expires while their school outside Japan are still closed? <laughs> I could try to answer, but it's not so easy. So basically, the restrictions for students coming to Japan is that we don't really know what is going to happen. So that was my one of my hopes that the government points out very quickly if students will be able to enter Japan in October, because as was mentioned in the question, many students are making plans to study in Japan and they don't know if they will be able to come here. And right now the Japanese government is considering how to let in athletes and people watching the Olympics next year and how to let in business people from Thailand and Vietnam. But I think it should be an urgent uh, priority to make clear their stance on international students. And the Japanese universities, some of them will still conduct classes online in autumn, so it might be possible for students to take in classes from their home country if they wish to do so. But it is, of course, not the same as the experience of coming to Japan and studying here. I think it's the second part of the question was hard to understand, so it's the Students. Yeah, the second part of the, of the question is uh, about the opposite, meaning uh, the students who had to evacuate to Japan to be with their families, but now face deportation. I don't know if this is a good word, when their student or tourist visa expires while their schools outside Japan are still closed. So basically, it means they cannot go back to the countries where they study because the visa expired. Yes, well, that's another of these problems that I cannot really suggest a solution right now. But I think many countries extend the visas for students. So also in Japan, I think the visas for the people who cannot come back have been extended, but still they cannot come. And I think some other countries will take similar measures, but that is really different in each country. So it is hard to give general advice on that one. I'm sorry. Okay. I have a sub uh, question from uh, the same journalist. Uh, addition, additionally, what does Japan lose in terms of technological competence when it first tries to be uniquely attractive to foreign talent, but then turns them away like this? Andre, you want to go at this one first, or Steve, Sven? Well, uh, I can I can try, but uh, well, I was also uh, teaching at uh, a national university in Japan for some time. I know of all these efforts and energy which was put into, let's say, 
internationalization of Japanese academia, which means uh, uh, spreading uh, <clears throat> the contacts with uh, other universities and uh, research institutions, employing more uh, uh, <clears throat> foreign professors, researchers, uh, getting more international students. And uh, of course, all this uh, contributes to the fer ferment of research, uh, of doing things at the forefront of, well, science in, in, in every field. And if suddenly these uh, vibrant uh, relations are cut, uh, universities close down or, or academic institutions and of course, they, they will, as uh, Professor Funk already has mentioned, it will, uh, I mean, the moment will be lost and uh, especially in uh, technology, in, in, in the natural sciences, one year of, uh, well, uh, being behind uh, means, uh, means a lot. Uh, uh, so I think uh, the loss stemming from this can be very, very, well, big and uh, it will take several years to uh, get back to uh, to the present level perhaps caroline you can add something yes. more well i think one point is also a lot of the international students that come to japan now they aim to work in japan so and they are they will be an important part of the workforce in japan because as you know japan itself is using population so I'm teaching at a program that is taught in English and we have international students and many of them are saying they would like to work in Japan. But if they experience this kind of situation that maybe they went home for the spring holiday, couldn't come back to Japan, or now they are closed into Japan and cannot leave for home, they might reconsider to do that. And also new students coming to Japan will reconsider doing that. So it might have actually uh, in the long term have an effect on the willingness of international students or international residents to come to Japan and work here. And that would severely affect not only the situation in academia, but also outside of academia, I think. Uh, I also can add that uh, some comments that were added to my petition page. Uh, indicated that uh, there are people who are upset enough to get out of Japan and uh, uh, pursue, uh, pursue their careers outside of Japan as uh, fast as they uh, can get out and find a job elsewhere. So there are people like that and it's uh, really detrimental to uh, Japan's reputation in the world, among, uh, especially among people who may be interested in uh, contributing to Japan. So very detrimental effects for the long term, I think. It's especially in a way a pity because Japan has really just established itself as a place where international students come to study and as a place where researchers come to work. It's been growing and we have seen so many positive signs. So that is kind of to have the stop line there is really for the timing also not so good, I think. Thanks a lot. I have a question. Um, did you have direct, direct discussion with the uh, Japanese auto authorities about this uh, issue? Wait, you want to go first? Your mic's off. Andre, you're muted. Ah, OK. Yeah. Uh... So maybe sign language. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, EAJS has uh, through the uh, <clears throat> Japan Foundation uh, office in Kern uh, contacted uh, Japan Foundation and we conveyed our worry about the situation, mentioning well many aspects that were mentioned today as well and. Uh, so the uh, Japan Foundation uh, gave a very, uh, in a way, uh, understanding answer. So uh, I hope that this way, uh, this was also conveyed uh, to uh, Japanese authorities who also are in charge and responsible for 
for, 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 for deciding uh, the measures uh, against uh, well, this uh, <coughs> coronavirus. Second question from um, my part. Do you think that this problem is well understood by, by Japanese population? When, maybe? Maybe it's when the uh, farmer can you answer? The reason why I ask this question is that I uh, uh, talk to many people in, in Japan uh, about this, uh, this problem, this issue, and the, the reaction I had is uh, mainly, but uh, if you are resident in Japan, why do you want to go abroad now? Uh, it's too risky to go abroad, so don't complain if you can't come back. That's the main, uh, uh, mainly the, the reaction I had. Uh, and, uh, but that, right, of course, when we explain that we, we can have private reasons or professional reasons to go, uh, uh, we should be able to go and come back. Yeah? And in this case, they understand that mainly uh, what the Japanese press is explaining that it, uh, Jap uh, foreign uh, people living in Japan tend to go abroad for various reasons, even, even uh, for holidays. And after they complain that they want to, to, to come back. So do you think the problem is well understood? Well, um, but if I may go first, for many people I talk to, they don't even know this problem exists. And I think one of the reason is that this, the way it is announced, it says that people who left before the travel ban started if they are permanent resident, long-term resident, or spouses of Japanese, they can come back. But this long-term resident only refers to a special type of visa called long-term resident visa, which is usually held by people who have a, a Japanese origin, Nikkei. So it doesn't mean all long-term residents can come back, but a lot of people see this announcement and they think, yeah, long-term residents can come back. And they don't realize that unless you have a permanent residence visa, or the long-term residence visa or a spouse visa and left before the travel ban started, you won't be able to come back. Yeah. So the, it's not understood, I think, in the general public. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe Sven, you have another comment. Well, yeah, also, sorry. Before I reached out to, uh, to the EAJS, I also tried to uh, get the uh, petition known, more known about uh, among Japanese, but well, the most reactions I found was uh, just like uh, Professor Funk just explained, they didn't know about it, about the scale of the problem. And also many showed just apathy. I haven't met uh, open opposition against this activity, but uh, well, uh, in most cases it was just apathy. Well. I'm not affected, so who cares? <laughs> yeah. the, the like, yeah. Hmm. Another question Do you plan other action uh, to uh, try to convince the Japanese authority to uh, let this uh, uh, Not at the moment. Oh. Well, we have been discussing this issue at the university and the university has raised it in meetings with other universities and with the Ministry of uh, Education and Research, Munkasho. So we are discussing it, but there is no, we don't, it is really hard to find a strategy on how to promote this issue. That's one of the reasons why we asked for this conference, uh, this press meeting. Uh, yes. So. I uh, what we can do is just uh, make uh, more people aware, uh, make these voices of people who are affected heard. Uh, this is what we can do. We are not, uh, I mean, especially AJS is not a, a political organization, so we can only explain how, uh, uh, what kind of problems uh, are generated by this kind of very uh, narrow decision. And I have an, a nice example here. Th this is an article uh, which was published in Mainichi uh, about 10 days ago. 
And uh, so this part here, show it more in detail. So the uh, Immigration Service Agency explained to the, to the uh, journalist from Mainichi that, well, uh, there is, uh, uh, well, uh, there is a limited capacity of uh, PCR tests uh, in Japan uh, at the moment, and they had to draw line somewhere. So uh, all this Nihon Nihon Niseka Kiban no Aru Aru no ni Sainyukuku Dekinae no wa Okinodoku to omotte iru. So uh, these people, well, they feel for them, well, uh, but. Well, they had to draw a line somewhere. And the, so this arbitra arbitrarily drawn line was uh, the citizenship. But actually, this, uh, there are some factual problems. Uh, uh, actually, capacity of tests, as uh, Prime Minister Abe told, the, told at the end of April already, is about at least 20,000 tests per day. Actually, implemented tests are 5,000 tests per day. And uh, so this is uh, this is then uh, <clears throat> the question not of uh, drawing the line but of political will whether increase the number of tests in Japanese airports or not. And as it was reported in the media, this is now going to be implemented in near future. But it could be implemented uh, more uh, earlier, and all these people. Uh, who cannot, who were denied re-entry could, uh, and the proportion of the foreigners who were denied re-entry uh, towards the, all the Japanese citizens who could re-enter at the same time is uh, not so big. So it's only a small fraction of people who would re-enter. So these uh, measures do not seem justified even uh, from this, uh, well, let's say, technical point of view. Thank you. And uh, as uh, Caroline Frank mentioned, uh, they are now thinking to allow athletes to uh, come in Japan to train and to prepare the uh, Olympics. Uh, if uh, this happen, if all athletes are allowed to come to Japan before students, what will be your reaction? Well, I don't think we will be very happy. I mean, I know athletes and Olympics is very important, but I think for the future of Japan, it is very important to let international students in. So as a long-term perspective, I think letting students in is should be considered seriously. Another option is to uh, allow um, businessmen with a private jet so, uh, meaning uh, not a, a huge plane with uh, 300 people, but only a small jet with uh, 10 or less people uh, would be allowed, as uh, Nikesh Shimbun uh, reported yesterday, I think. Uh, if it happens, what would be your, yeah, if it happens, what would be your reaction? I just mentioned, so maybe now it's one of you. Yeah, I would uh, say that this is just an enlargement of the current policy of let business travel visitors back in. And uh, I would just say it's, uh, uh, an already unlogical situation is more unlogical and worse. So uh, favoring business visitors over residents who contribute more to Japanese society uh, than uh, and uh, business travelers is just, uh, well, irrational. It's a political uh, decision that has nothing to do with, um, well, with uh, sound epidemi epidemiology as I understand it. And, uh, well, in that case, legal residents of Japan should, should uh, be more upset uh, than as they are already. So, yeah, it was it's just a, well, it's, it's basically the finger towards the international com community to Japan. So, yeah, uh, not really a uh, good policy, but well, we can only try 
that much. So uh, I, I hope uh, raising more awareness will lead to, an, uh, to making them overthinking their uh, policies. Uh, two last questions. Um, I would like to know what happened uh, for people who are living in Japan now, foreign resident people who are living in Japan now. Uh, do they receive any notice uh, saying that they won't be able to be back in a uh, um, uh, delay they don't know? I have several witnesses which are quite different. Uh, some say that they are going to the plane without any notice. Some others say that uh, they were noticed that they won't be able to be back. And all the people I hear heard are all uh, foreign residents in Japan. Do you have any witnesses about uh, this matter? I also have only anecdotal evidence. We had one student who went back home because a member of her family died and she asked at the immigration office beforehand and they said because it's for sure she would be able to come back. But that is just one anecdotal evidence, so I would not know the general policy. The last question. Uh, uh, Japanese authorities say that uh, they give exemp exemption to people for humanitarian reasons. But uh, when people who are living in Japan are not allowed to come back to their home. In my opinion, this is a humanitarian reason. I mean, a, a, a humanitarian issue. Do you agree with that? Yes, it's a humanitarian issue and uh, it also could be a human rights issue. So here, uh, I think it's a very murky situation and uh, a lot of uh, long-term human rights issues can, uh, can, can, uh, can surface and uh, then uh, it could be uh, a big problem, uh, additional problem for, for, for Japanese authorities, I, I would suppose. <clears throat> From do you have any comment to add? No? No, not that much. So uh, it's around uh, one uh, o'clock. Uh, do, do you have something to add, uh, um, Karen? Want to any comments or to, uh... I think we just all hope that the situation will be and that a special residents will be allowed to enter and then in the future also a strategy will be developed for international students. So if I may add, uh, yeah. actually in these few days there were reports uh, on NHK and then also in Japan Times that uh, uh, Japanese authorities are working towards uh, accepting uh, so uh, international students and uh, teachers at universities, uh, they will re uh, <clears throat> allow re-entry uh, of these people, especially those who left before uh, uh, the measures were introduced in early April. So these are all uh, we see this process of softening little by little uh, the attitude and this is development in the right direction and we do hope that uh, all these limitations for uh, uh, foreign residents in Japan will be uh, lifted so that uh, they can uh, be treated the same as uh, Japanese citizens. Well, thanks a lot. It uh, in the afternoon. I, I thank you very much for uh, this uh, uh, very, very uh, important and very interesting presentation and comments. Uh, also, I would say that uh, this uh, session uh, will be uh, on um, uh, YouTube, I guess, on the uh, FCCD channel, so you can uh, see it uh, once again. And uh, I would like to apologize for the technical problem we have in the beginning. Thanks a lot. We all hope that this uh, issue
issues will be solved in a uh, very uh, few days, uh, weeks, we say. Uh, and uh, we also hope that uh, Japanese people will understand uh, what uh, <clears throat> is this uh, this issue and how uh, it is uh, uh, hard for uh, lots of uh, Japanese uh, the foreign uh, residents in Japan. So thanks a lot and uh, please uh, follow this uh, this matter. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time you gave us and. Uh, Yes. Yeah. Thanks very much.